Hello, I'm Mark Hughes. Welcome to Disability Viewpoints now on our 25th year. With me today is Nick Wilkie from the Metropolitan Center for Independent Living. Welcome, Nick. Glad to have you back in the studio. Oh, I'm so excited to be in the Did studio. Did you have to take yourself on tour when you came in? It's been oh, a while. It has been a while. <laughs> I had to remember to go to the right door. <laughs> there you go. Well, welcome, and who's your guest today? So my guest this month is um, my friend and colleague. His name is Tabiso Rowan. Uh, Tabiso has a brand new position um, with the Disability Hub MN, MN, and he's a community engagement specialist. Great. So he's going to be with us to talk about everything that the Hub does and kind of how they can help the disability community gather information um, so that they can make appropriate decisions about what they want to do and be more independent. It'll be good to see him. It will. And uh, my guest today is Trevor Turner from the Minnesota Council on Disabilities, by which I've served 12 years. And uh, disabilities, he's going to do, uh, we did a le special legislative report. As you know, the session just started. By the way, we want to let people at home know that the day for Community uh, Day is Wednesday now this year from 10 to 11 down at the... Uh, MnDOT cafeteria. Okay. So if you come into the state office building, you'll go down uh, one floor mm -hmm. and go to your right, go down the ramp, and then the cafeteria will be right around the corner. So now it's Wednesday. It's the Wednesdays panel. from 10 to 11 at, the, <laughs> at this Minnesota at right. MnDOT cafeteria. So Good there you go. go. Other than that, join us for the special show coming up next on SPNN. Mark Hughes, Disability Viewpoints. Thanks for watching, and we'll be right back. Welcome to Disability Viewpoints. I'm your co-host this month, Nicholas Wilkie, and with me today is my friend and colleague, Tabiso Rowan. Tabiso is a community engagement specialist at the Disability Hub and MN. Tabiso, thank you for being with us here this month. It's always good to see you. It's, I'm really pumped up to be back in the studio this month, and I'm really excited to have you here as my guest. Yeah, thanks for having me, Nick. Happy to be here. No problem, man. No problem. J just to kick us off a little bit, um, can you tell our viewers a little bit more about the Disability Hub? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So Disability Hub MN is a free and statewide resource network that helps people with disabilities and people involved in their lives. So like their family members or community workers or care workers or care team. Um, so they, we help people solve problems, na navigate the system, and plan for the future. Um, so we're, uh, we're a, you know, like a safe and neutral spot for people to get information on all sorts of different topics. Um, you know, we, we, we use, um, you know, comprehensive and resources, you know, and comprehensive and trusted resources. Um, to help people um, get information on, once again, all sorts of different topics from anywhere from like, you know, government benefits um, to community programs or, you know, different services and supports. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Like tons of information and people can access tons of different stuff through the resource, which is great. Um, can you help us dive a little bit deeper? Um, what's the role What's the role specifically of an options counselor and like the other roles within the hub? There's different ways to get in touch with the hub, right? You can call us or you can chat um, or you can email us. Uh, and generally that would go to an options counselor. Um, we do have other, you know, kind of levels of the, the, the options counselor. So we have, you know, people who do work in benefits mm -hmm. and those types of roles. Um, and so, but as, yeah, an options counselor helps people to understand the tools that are available to them and to find resources um, that can help them, you know, plan um, and make informed decisions that can help them benefit their, their lives and to live the, the best life that they want. Awesome. You know? Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, along those lines, Tavisa, um, can you provide our viewers maybe some examples 
of different um, scenarios that an options counselor might get? Yeah, yes. So um, people will call in about just about any any type of topic. Right now it's winter, so snow, like, how, right. you know, snow removal and things like that. Right. How do I, I so there's snow everywhere. How do I, <laughs> how can I get to the bus stop or whatever it might be? Um, some of the tools that we, that we have are, you know, the hub and the hub website. Our website has a lot, a ton of tools and a lot of information. Um, one of those tools is MyVault. So MyVault is this, you know, this program that on our website, it's also attached to a couple other websites. So there's a web, website, uh, HB101, so it's hb101.org, and then db101.org. HB101, that HB stands for housing benefits. So that website has tons of information on housing benefits. And then DB101 stands for disability benefits, 101. And it has tons of information regarding disability benefits. Um, and so my vault is connected with all of those and people can create an account through my vault and they can like share documents with their with their caseworkers or social workers or or care workers and their care team. So it's like a kind of like a one stop shop where people can share information. And um, there's a lot of a lot that my vault can do. For example, you can get you know um, information on your benefits, whether you have SSI or something like that, Social Security, you know uh, benefits or things like that. And so that's one of, one of the many tools that we have. You know, we have information on our website for things like youth in transition, right? And so, um, you know, transitioning from adolescence to adulthood can involve a lot of changes. And so we have um, a lot of information on youth in transition, right? So, so it's a place where people can go to get as much information as they can so that they can make, you know, once again, good and informed decisions about transitioning into adulthood. So just for example, there's, there's a ton of stuff that I probably don't have enough time to jump into, <laughs> but yeah, those are a couple, couple of, of examples. Those, those are some great tools. Those are definitely some great tools. Um, what do you think, um, what do you think is the most common, what's the most common call? that the hub might get? Oh, the most common call. So there are various calls that um, a lot of people are looking for information on. A big one is healthcare coverage, okay. right? So um, um, yeah, we can, we can even enroll people into like certain, they call them SNBC plans. So okay. if you have medical assistance, you, you would potentially qualify for managed care okay. so like you know you care health partners or there's there's several other ones it depends on what county you live in but that's a that's a big one you know i have people call in and say um you know i want to work but i don't want to lose my benefits right. right and so so we can help people look into their the different options like medical assistance or medicare um, there's a program called Medical Assistance for Employed Persons with Disabilities. MAEPD. MAEPD, you got it. Yeah, you know what's up. <laughs> so uh, MAEPD is a program that allows people to work and keep their medical assistance because with MAEPD, there's no asset limit. and Or no, I'm sorry, there's a higher asset limit. There is an asset limit. Yep. It goes up to $20,000 versus the $3,000. Right. But there is, um, there's no income limit, which is fantastic. You know, yeah. um, people do have to pay a premium, which is based off of their income. So it's kind of right. like a sliding scale fee. Yeah. But you'd be surprised at how many people don't know that they can work right. and keep their benefits right. and make more money awesome. than you know maybe that's, they're getting from Social Security. That's so important. That's yeah, so important. it's huge. Not, you know, not to interrupt you or anything, no, but ahead. yeah, that's a big, you know, we have a lot of information on advocating for yourself and being an advocate, being a self-advocate, which is, you know, a big part of um, my mission is to help people understand that they can, you know, take their life into their own hands, especially in the disability community. You know, we have a lot of people in the disability world that are helping us you know, with our benefits and with our care plans and things like I have in my own personal life, you know, I'm had a spinal cord injury, so I'm paralyzed and I have doctors and all sorts of different 
people that help me, and so it's good when I can get the information I need to advocate for myself. You know. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, to be so, I know you have a new role. You have a new role now too. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so how does your new role compare to your your old role? Yeah. So, um, and just kind of to step into a little bit of history, I I started off working as at a um, an agency that provides housing and assisted living services to people with disabilities. Yep. And then I worked as an options counselor, which yep. I was talking about at Disability Hub MN for five years. Um, and then this past September, September 2022, I started a new role as the one of the uh, community engagement specialists. And so within that role as a community engagement specialist, now I... Uh, my role involves getting out into the community more, um, so going to different events and conferences and, um, you know, setting up our booth and then working our booth and just communi uh, interacting with people out in the community and informing them of, you know, the good work that we right. do at the Hub and all the services uh, that we can provide, you know, in terms of helping people find resources and things like that. Uh, and so I also, with... As a community engagement specialist, um, I, I do marketing and you know social, manage social media, and there's a there's a lot of different hats that I wear as a community engagement specialist. Awesome, yeah, yeah. that's great. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, um, to be so, is there is there are there any other highlights that you want to that you want to share about what an amazing resource the disability help is? Or even, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I, um, you know, well, one thing is feel free to follow us on our Facebook page. Right. We got to put that out there. Right. Um, you know, there are, um, one, of the, one of the things that we have on our, that you can sign up for on our website, it's called the Virtual Insight Panel okay. or VIP. Right? There we go. And so uh, through the virtual insight panel, we get submissions and, and um, you know, we, maybe questions from the disability services division at DHS at the Department of Human Services. Um, and we also have, you know, maybe some questions we, at, we have for ourselves that we want to get direct feedback from the community. Right. Mm -hmm. And so through the virtual insight panel, we can ask questions. We have members. People can go to our website and sign up. Um, and then we can, you know, send out questions so we can get direct feedback from the disability community and send that to the disability services division to help people, nice. um, you know, or to help them, you know, figure out better ways to, to manage programs or if they have questions or whatever it might be. You know, there's a lot of different things we can do with that. Cool. So that's, that's a big one um, that, I, that I really like, you know, especially when it comes to just um, learning about the community and things like that. And um, yeah, no, I, I think it's a big part about um, some of the different resources that we have is, you know, for me in my life, a big part of my mission is to, um, to be active in my community and to, um, to be of service. Right. Um, and so this is, you know, the hub is allows me to um, to yeah, fulfill a, to fulfill my mission. It's a great cog that allows not only you to to be employed and be working and be doing things that you love, but it allows the community to do the same. Yeah. So, yes. You know. And and then you know another thing besides all of this, which I love, is is the disability community. Like I said, I had a spinal cord injury in 2011, and that kind of was my first step really into the disability community. And I love the diversity mm -hmm. um, that we have in the disability community, you know, and I love the, the passion that people have for life, you know, and, and show us, uh, like for me, for example, show me, you know, um, how I can really appreciate the beauty and diversity of life. It's such a vibrant community. And to be so, you're, you're an excellent representative. You're my wonderful friend and colleague, I want to thank you for coming on today and thank you for sharing a little bit more about the Disability Hub. Um, I hope to have, it, have you on again and uh, I want you, want you, our viewers to stay tuned. We've got some messages coming up and 
Disability Viewpoints. We'll be back in a few minutes. My special guest now is Trevor Turner from the Minnesota Council on Disabilities, and I myself have had the good fortune of spending 12 years on there, which by law is about all you can uh, serve, but you can reapply again, and I wouldn't mind doing that, but it was, it, out of all the committees I've served on, it's one of the things that, I, one of the committees that I felt got a lot done, not only for the people in the Twin Cities, but for the people in the state of Minnesota, which we serve. So. Trevor Turner is with me now, and first we're going to start out with his position on the Minnesota Council on Disabilities and the great things they're working on. Trevor, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Trevor Turner, and I'm the Public Policy Director for the Minnesota Council on Disability. Sounds good. And, and I know the legislative session has started now, and there's a lot of bills you're working on, and I'm working on one of them with you. But why don't you explain what you're working on and how you prioritize and how you set your goals for what bills you're going to work on and so on and so forth. Let us know the mechanics of how things really work at the Minnesota Council on Disabilities, if you would. Absolutely. So the Minnesota Council on Disability is the state's only independent disability advocacy a state agency. So we have other state agencies that work with the deaf, deaf, blind, hard of hearing, like the commission. Um, we have the Governor's Council on Developmental Disabilities, but Minnesota Council on Disability is the only one that advocates for all disabilities, and we're independent, so we're not part of any other large cabinet agency or anything like that. And our job is to serve as an advocate, as a advisor to the governor and lieutenant and the lieutenant governor and the state legislature, um, and also be a training resource for businesses in the state of Minnesota mm -hmm. or any organization in, the, uh, in Minnesota. Um, and we also serve as a technical resource. So um, we do a lot of advocating for, you know, digital accessibility, online accessibility, um, and things like that, and uh, as well as physical accessibility, like right. things and right. things like that. I know you're busy over there. And mm -hmm. uh, so now let's uh, hear about some of the bills you're working on before we get into the legislative update. Absolutely. So actually, I'm actually about to run out the door and go testify on Senate File 7 um, as soon as this is over. Um, Senate File 7 is a bill, a billion dollar bill. It's a very large bill that they're coming out right away. Um, and this bill would um, it addresses and tries to solve the PCA workforce shortage crisis um, by, you know, increasing the rates, increasing PCA pay, um, and making it uh, a lot easier for families who choose to be the, uh, you know, the sole caregiver for their family member with a disability. Um, and so this bill is a very large bill that we're supporting. And so I'll be testifying on it this afternoon. And um, I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, we also have a bill that deals with employment. So it's called the Employment and Retention of Employees with Disabilities Bill. Um, and this bill is actually really codifies the executive orders that Mark Dayton, Governor Mark Dayton and Governor Tim Wall uh, issued um, to make hiring at the state of Minnesota more inclusive for people with disabilities. Um, when Governor Dayton became a governor, um, at the time only 3% of the state workforce, uh, the state government workforce were people with disabilities. And so that, that was down from the early in the 90s when it was 10%. Mm -hmm. And so there was a problem that the state was not hiring people with disabilities and people with disabilities were not staying and being retained at the state mm -hmm. workforce. So uh, these executive orders actually helped improve the hiring and retention of people with disabilities um, at the state, but they're just executive orders. So we're hoping to codify them um, so that they, it doesn't matter who the governor is, it doesn't matter who's in power, it is state statute. Just, and, just so long as everything's implemented then. Yeah, Yeah. right. That's right. Um, so that's another bill that we're working on, and uh, there's lots of other bills too. Great. Give us a professional outlook of how you think, what you think the legislature's going to do. We have a $1.8 billion surplus now, or $18 billion surplus, I'm corrected. And uh, and so we got a lot of things going on. And why don't you just take it from here, and I'll let you be the star of the show. 
Absolutely. As you probably already know, um, I would hope you already know, is that you know, the DFL won the, the Senate. They flipped the Senate in the November election, so which meant and they retained the control of the House as well as the governorship. And so that means that we now have a DFL trifecta um, in charge of our government, which means that you know, partisan gridlock will be less of a problem this year. And now the issue is more just how ambitious the DFL agenda is. And, so, and that's the, the, that can be challenging in the sense that there's so much to do. And there's $18 billion to be spent, like you said. Um, and there's lots of different organizations and um, state agencies that are vying to get a piece of that pie. And it will be a very interesting session. Um, but there's a lot of big builds right out the get go this week. Um, you know, codifying and protecting abortion rights. Um, you know, like I said, I mentioned marijuana earlier, is going to be a marijuana big legalizing one. marijuana, sports betting, um, lots of different big things that are transformational um, in the state of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So this will probably be one of the most transformational um, and impactful legislative sessions in a few years. And like you say, it just depends on how much really gets done. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad I don't work in federal politics. <laughs> it's a <laughs> so, lot easier than state level. <laughs> so let's let's say let's prioritize five things yeah. or three even. Out of the things that are gonna you think are gonna go in the legislature, what are the top five, either for the Minnesota Council on Disability or you yourself, Trevor Turner, would like to see prioritized number one, two, three, four, or five? I'd like to see, you know, the, the PCA workforce crisis shortage issue addressed and, and resolved. Um, it won't be resolved, it, but it will be um, lessened. And I, that's a really big one. Um, I've been working a lot with the family of Dennis Prothero. Dennis Prothero was a man with a disability who lost his legs in November because of a PCA shortage. He was spent an entire weekend in his wheelchair and was not able to move out of it because he didn't have a PCA to help him with that. Mm -hmm. And he ended up losing his legs. Um, and then a month later in December, last December died and passed away. And so wow. um, it's a really tragic story. And so we're working with his family. His family doesn't want it to happen again. So we're working with his family to pass and advocate for um, legislation that would address the PCA shortage crisis. So that's probably number one and impacts the, uh, so many Minnesotans with disabilities. Right. Um, I know of another case where that's kind of happening too, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's just how do you remedy? It? I don't know. And you got there was a story on the news last night that some of the uh, homes are being shut down that people need, and yep. so we're you know we got a lot of things to work on. Yeah, it's it's a really major crisis, and one of the things that it, you know obviously I would like to see you know legalized marijuana. I would like to see some of these other things, but because I think that would be good for the state. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, when you see our legislature prioritizing sports betting over you know you know this PCA crisis <laughs> or kind yeah. of who's got their priorities where now, so yeah. yeah yeah okay and that's number two. So mm -hmm. number three. Number three, I would say, would probably be special education. Yep. Um, and and that's, fortunately, the governor came out and said that's what he would fully want to fully fund public schools, which includes fully funding special education. And so the governor and, and the DFL leadership is in line with that one. Yeah, and it's, especially where he is kind of a teacher and a, a football coach and all those things, uh, you know, that'd probably be the sure bet. Number four. Number four, um, you know, this for the council on disability, I would say it's a big deal. You know, we're asking for because there's a large surplus and this is a transformational year, we're asking to you know increase our budget that to a point almost double our budget. Um, we actually have a very small budget that we use, and we're a small but mighty agency. We do a lot of work with very little, um, and the pandemic really showed how much of a demand there was for our services. And disability advocacy has only increased in the last couple of years. Right. And so we're asking for a budget increase so that we can really provide and serve Minnesota disabilities to the fullest extent. Well, possible. and absolutely where you, go, where you go statewide, you know, you're not just the metropolitan area. And number five, I mean, like I said, personally, I, you know, I do want to see legalization of marijuana. I think that last year in the, uh, we did legalize edibles, um, 
to an extent, and you can buy those at any store at this point now, um, but it's very unregulated and it's untaxed. And I would like to see a more regulated market uh, that brings in revenue for the state, uh, much like I used to live in Colorado and I lived in Colorado when they legalized mm -hmm. marijuana and it was a big deal. And it was yeah. really transformational for the state. And I think Minnesota should really, yeah. you know, half the country now lives in the state where marijuana, marijuana is legal. So I think Minnesota is really missing out by not um, having done that earlier. So it's, it's definitely something that can help a lot of people with disabilities. Cancer, you know, cancer patients by all means. And now we'll do the final word segment. Anything that I might have missed that you want to mention before we go? No, I think I'm really looking forward to the legislative session, but I like I want to really emphasize that, you know, with even though we have full DFL control, there's still a lot of politics um, being involved in the process. I mean, a lot of negotiations still happening. So um, it, I don't think lobbying or legislating is going to be easier. Um, no. It's just going to be very different. And so many groups now vying for the budget. Anyway, good luck today, and uh, we'll see you again. And thanks for helping us out with the legislative update, and we'll talk soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. You bet. Good luck today, Trevor. Bye now. Well, we heard from... Uh, Trevor Turner about what to expect during session this year and how the Democrats have kind of flipped everything and took control. And so it's kind of interesting. And he also uh, gave some good pointers on testifying that there are so many different groups and so many different needs now that testifying is going to be a lot tougher because even though we have a $18 billion surplus, it's going to be a little harder to divvy it up. So he really gave some good insights, and we look forward to him and his group uh, being part of our legislative update on the, on this very show. And now your thoughts on your guest. So um, once again, Mark, I've really enjoyed having to be so on as a guest. Um, the Disability Hub MN is a, is a valuable resource that the entire community can use uh, to gather information. As a professional, I've been using it as a resource for for 16 years now, mm -hmm. um, and um, it can it continues to be a great a great option for our community to be able to. They are make they are doing an excellent job of advertising, getting the word out, and there's some great leadership there. Yeah. So, those of you that need to use it or want to use it, by all means, feel free to do so. Yeah. Well, that about does it for this edition of Disability Viewpoints. I'd like to thank Nick Wilkie from the Metropolitan Center for Independent Living for coming on over here and joining me finally in the studio today. <laughs> Happy we've, to be here. We've Mark. enjoyed having them. And to those of you at home, have a, a great uh, month ahead, and we'll see you soon. And we'll probably see you down the state office building. One more time before we go, our community today has now switched from Tuesday to Wednesday mornings from 10 to 11. Same place, Min.Cafeteria. We'll see you there. Thanks for watching, and bye for now. <laughs>